Uh, good to see you here. Um, the topic of our lesson today is going to be trading in um, in points, not in percents. Or and of course uh, talking about uh, trading in uh, uh, quantities and not in uh, uh, in fixed quantities. So we're going to talk about these two issues, which I believe is very very um, basic, but it's very, very important. And um, the thing is, I just got a message today from a private message from one one of the traders in the trading room, which actually asked me, why do I kind of trade the same number of shares all the time? And uh, I thought that, well, if this guy doesn't really know the reason, I should repeat that. And, um, and that's just going to be the opening part. So if you have any questions to ask me afterwards, um, I will uh, make sure um that um we're going to answer them let me ask you a question guys uh let's start with again let's start with the basics uh you have a stock and again we're going to start talking about uh points we have a stock uh let's assume it's a 100 dollars stock and um well let's say in the morning it moves up by 20 percent and then Sometime later in the afternoon, it comes down by 20%. Now, I want a quick answer to my question. Um, started this morning, 9.30, $100, moved up by 20%, came down by 20% from the top later. What's the price that the stock is going to be traded at the afternoon after it moved up by 20% and then came down by 20%? 96 I mean, that's just basic mathematics, right? That is true. So it's, I mean, if if, if if you were thinking like it came up by 20%, then it's 120 and came down by 20%, then it's going to be 100, then of course you're wrong. Um, the obvious answer is 96, it came down by 20% from the top, so it's a little bit more. So what I'm trying to say here, uh, working with percent is a little bit confusing. It's just like I would say, uh, you have a stock, the cost is, um, it, uh, the price is uh, $100, now it came down by 50%, so it came down to $50. So if it's down to $50 and now, how many percents do you need for it to move back up to 100 so it's not 50 percent anymore it's 100 percent because then 50 dollars 100 percent you need to go to back to 100 dollars so this is of course basic uh, stuff but it's confusing that's why one of the reasons that's why we never trade in percents we never discuss percents when we're trading I get a lot of questions like, uh, what, how many percents do you make uh, per year on, I mean, what, what, what would be, uh, what would be your income in percents, uh, meaning what return do you get on your money? Like if you have a $100,000 account, for example, what would it be at the end of the year? Uh, the return on the investment, as we call it, as investors, has nothing to do with the income of a trader. A trader has income. We do not work in percents. We work in points. If I would say that the stock came down by 50 points, a $100 stock came down by 50 points, then in order to go back to $100, it's going to be 50 points from 50 points, meaning came down by 50 points and then it's moving up by 50 points. If I would say that I traded the stock and it moved up today by um, 10%, now, let's say, um, and the, the question may be, how much money did I make? Did I make 10%? Absolutely not. Uh, a 10% uh, of, uh, let's say, a $100 stock is uh, $10. Uh, how much is 10% if the stock costs uh, $1? That's 10 cents. So, obviously, I'm not making the same amount of money. So, it's a basic idea that traders are always discussing percents. Sorry, <laughs> points, not percents. We always trade in points. Um, and when we talk about a point, that means $1. Stock moved up by $100, stock moved up by one point, now it's at 101. Uh, a $1 stock moved up by one point, now it's trading at $2. So again, we're working with uh, points and not with percents. Uh, another uh, important uh, matter to understand here is that um, the calculation, the calculation is much, much simpler. For example, if you work with uh, percents and uh, you discuss uh, 
um, and you trade the same quantities all the time, and we're, go we're going to talk about that in a few seconds. If you trade with the same quantities all the time, then if I trade 1,000 shares, um, each trade and stock moved up by 20 cents, then I always know that I'm up or down uh, $200, moved up by 20 cents, I have 1,000 shares, it's much, much easier. So as traders, we always talk in points and in number of uh, in number of uh, shares. That's very important. But um, there's several more reasons to that. One of them I just discussed is, is a very quick calculation of your profit and loss. So if a stock is up by 20 cents and I'm trading 1,000 shares, I'm, I know I'm up $200 and so on. Uh, I can tell you that when I started uh, trading my trading career, I didn't really know that. And it sounds funny to me right now, but uh, back then I didn't really know that. So when I had um, a stock that uh, its price was, let's say, $36.49, and I would um, usually trade by $5,000 at that time, then I would buy 137 shares. So if it moves up by 17 cents, how much money did I make with 117 and 37 shares? Almost impossible to calculate. That's the main reason. It's much, much easier to calculate when you trading with the same number of shares all the time. Second reason is if you trade stocks. Now, you know I'm trading CFDs, but I did trade stocks for many, many years. And there's a lot of people here who are trading stocks in the United States. If you're trading stocks, you can't trade in less than hundreds. Now, you, you may want to trade with a quantity of, I don't know, 137 shares, but it's almost impossible because when you try and buy and sell stocks on the stock exchange, then most buyers and sellers will only be trading round numbers, meaning you will never be able to sell 37 shares. Well, you can. You just have to wait for execution and your execution price is not going to be the same as the 100 shares. So if, you're, if you, for some reason, hold 137 shares and you want to, th to sell just 37, well, good luck. It's going to take you some time. You're not going to get the same price. And in fact, nobody does that. So we always trade hundreds, uh, 100 shares, maybe 400 shares, maybe 300 shares, uh, 1000 shares. We do not trade 137. Uh, I do trade CFDs now. So there's uh, in CFDs, there's no problem such as this. So it's, it's much easier. But if you're trading stocks, then you have uh, problem. Third reason is uh, the fact that stocks move in points. Now I want to share my screen with you. I want to show you just one interesting breakout that happened today. I mean, just a $3 stock. Well, it was three, now it's four. A $3 stock. Uh, look at the way it behaved. There's a nice breakout point here, right? So that's like uh, 360. Stock is at 360 and it moved all the way up to $4. It's like a 40 cent uh, breakout. Okay, so that's a 40 cent breakout. There's another breakout here. It's like a 30 cent breakout. So we have a stock that is priced at uh, three something dollars and moved up by 40 cents. And here it moved up by 30 cents. So that's a very interesting thing because if I'm gonna show you a stock, I think AA did good today, let me see. Yeah, AA sure did good. Oh, that's a nice breakout formation here too. So look at AA. That's a nice breakout formation here. And here's another breakout formation. Now, if you take a look at this breakout, uh, that's uh, 53.60. Um, you know, that's that's a 50 cent breakout too. So we had, uh, yeah, right, 60, yeah, 50, no. 40 something, 50 cent. So that's a 50 cent, let's call it a 50 cent breakout. A $50 stock moved up by 56 cents, okay? So if we count it in percents, then that's 1%. That's a 1% move. And obviously a very nice breakout. That's, again, let's call it 50 cent breakout. So that's a nice 50% breakout. Now let's uh, move back to the one I showed you earlier. We've got uh, a nice, uh, how much was that? Uh, 40 cent breakout here. 
So we've got another, a nice 40 cent breakout, a $3 stock, let's call it a $4 stock, that broke out by 40 cents. So how much is that in percent? That, that one moved up by approximately 10%. That's a 40 cent, almost $4 stock. So we've got a 10% move here, and um, in the uh, $50 stock, we've got the same 40 or 50 cents, but we have just 1%. Now, the interesting, the interesting part about uh, this is that stocks do not move in percents, meaning you have one here that moved up, AA, that moved up by, again, let's say 40 cents, and we have this one that moved up by 40 cents, and that's a nice breakout, and here's a nice breakout too. Now, why does that happen? Why does a stock that priced at uh, $4 moved up by $0.40, cents, and the stock that is priced at $50 moved up by $0.50. Cents. And well, the answer is very simple. That's the way traders operate. That's the way we, traders, are operating. Not only traders, in fact, investors too. Um, let's stop here and uh, see if you have any questions. I see uh, Blazon had one. Uh, how do you decide whether pullback or breakout is good? When you look at the trade, not the topic that I'm discussing right now, but we can talk about that later. So again, um, let's watch this uh, AA here and try and figure out what we're doing, how, how stock like that is being traded. So um, stock, uh, you know, that's a nice whole number here. You see, that's a nice whole number here, fifty-three dollars. Really, <laughs> even nicer breakout, right? So we watch this fifty-three dollar breakout here, and we ask, how does that happen? Why did it move up by forty cents or so? Um, a little bit more here, I see. So the thing is like that. Uh, let's say that we take a good look at this trade intraday, and we didn't. I mean, I wasn't there, but uh, I'll tell you what, if I was, if 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 I happened to see this trade, certainly it would go on my. Uh, on my picks of the day. I mean, that, that would certainly be a stock that I would be trading. A whole number, wonderful technical formation like that, I would definitely be a very, very happy to, to trade this stock. So I'm watching this stock and I'm asking myself, okay, I should move at um, over 53. And then it pops up over 53. And what usually happens is I would hesitate a little bit. I mean, maybe not me, but the average trader would hesitate a little bit. And then the stock would go up by one, two, and then once it came down up to 53.01, let's say 53.02, I then I looked at it and said, oh, well, you know what? I would really hate to have a loser today. You know what? Just prove to me, move another one or two cents and I'm, 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 I promise I will buy you. Something stupid like that. And then it moves up by two or three cents and maybe I get in at instead of 5301, maybe I get in at 5303, 04, something like that. Hesitated a little bit, try to see if the stock can actually prove to me that it, it's successful. Then I would hit, I would hit the buy button, usually not exactly at 5301. That's the average trader would do, okay? If you're experienced, you would definitely click it as the second that it moves higher. So I click the button, I chased it a little bit up and I bought it, uh, let's assume 5303, something like that. And then I go back to the $3 stock and I see a nice breakout formation here. And I would uh, say, okay, I want to buy it over 30, 360. And then I would probably do the same. Okay, so we just moved to 361. Should I buy it? Well, I hesitate a little bit, another two or three cents, and then I click the button. So I, I could probably buy this one two or three cents over the trigger price. I could still do fine. Okay. And then the difference between buying this one three cents up and buying this one three cents up is huge because a three dollar stock was up by one percent when I finally clicked the button. And this one, even if I bought it five cents higher, that would be like 0.1 percent up. So again, it has nothing to do with percents. When we watch it as traders, we watch it in cents. Should I buy it at 30? 
360, at 361 or 362 or 363, it moves up by cents. Stocks moves up by cents. They do not move up by percents. So that would be the same with $50 stock. I would consider buying it one, two, three, four, five cents higher. I would consider buying this one one, two, three, four, five, six higher. This one would usually uh, move up uh, 40, 50 cents at a breakout. The $3 stock could do the same, move up by 30, 40 cents as a breakout because once I bought it at the exact same number of shares, let's say $1,000 and it moved up by 40 cents, I'm up $400. Maybe I want to start taking some profits when I'm up $400 because I'm always trading the same size. And then if a $50 stocks move up by 40 cents, that would be the same. That would be a $400 breakout for me and then maybe I want to start selling some and there's a small pullback here maybe that's because I just started selling and that would be the approximately same thing with the three dollar stock so again I'm moving in a little bit late but I'm counting my entry price in cents and I'm selling at the point where I think it should pause and the three dollar stock would pause after 30 40 50 cents the same way as a 50 dollar stock would pause after 40 50 cents so you obviously understand now if you didn't till now that we always talk about same quantities we always talk about the same quantities because stocks behave the same. $3 stock will behave the same as the $50 stock, as I just demonstrated that. So if I'm going to use 1,000 shares in this very nice breakout formation here at the $50 stocks, I would in fact be using $50,000 of, of my money. I, I mean, I, I could do that with, uh, uh, I use Colmex, so in, in my case, I don't need more than, um, one to twenty five percent of the money, so I, I, I need like two and a half thousand dollars. That's it for fifty thousand. But it doesn't really matter. I'm using fifty thousand dollars here. I'm using one thousand shares, and that would mean I'm using three thousand dollars or maybe four thousand dollars over here, three or four dollar stock. Now, maybe if I have enough money in my account, I should be trading this one with ten thousand shares. I mean, if I'm making four hundred dollars here. I could trade this one because I have enough money. I have $50,000 in my account. I could trade that stock with 10,000 shares. And when it moves up by 40 cents, I could really make a lot of money. That wouldn't be $400. That would be $4,000 with 10,000 shares, right? I mean, why should I trade just 1,000 if I can trade 10,000 shares? Well, that is true. But we need to also to remember that sometimes breakouts fail. I mean, we do not always succeed. We fail, we fail a lot. And when stock, when $3 stock is going to fail, it will easily move down by 30, 40, 50 cents. Easily move down because again, fear factor would work the same way. Should I sell? Well, it just moved down by two, three cents. Maybe I sell here, okay, I sell down. No, I sell a little bit more, okay. Move down by 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents. They would move the same to the other direction. Meaning, if you trade $10,000, be ready to lose a lot of money too. So again, we're trading the same quantities and we are using the same, we do not use the same amount of money. So in this case, we could use $4,000 of our money. In this case, we could use $50,000 of our money. And that would be different. But if you ask me how much money do I use per trade, I do not have an answer. I mean, I, yes, I could calculate, but it's not the way traders think. It's not the way traders behave. We think in points, we trade in fixed quantities. And I just gave you several reasons why we do that. Now, I know that's basic stuff, but some people still do that. Like the trader who asked me today, should I trade more money because it was a very um, inexpensive stock. So that was um, my main topic. If you have any uh, questions regarding that, I would be very happy to answer. Or if you have any other questions re regarding any other topic, uh, we are at a mentorship session. I would uh, be glad to answer too. So I hope that helped you um, in some ways. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. Thank you. I, I know it's basic stuff. It's basic. It's fundamental. But the problem is 
some of you guys, the ones who have been trading for more than just a few weeks, okay? Maybe you don't need this basic stuff. Maybe you think you don't need it, but you don't really know the answer. Some of you don't really know. You know that we're trading by fixed quantities. You know I'm always talking about my fixed quantities trades. Well, not always. When you have a big mover like a hundred dollar stock or seventy dollar stocks and, and, and north of that, then you would probably lower your size. I mean I'm not always trading one thousand shares if that's my number. I may lower it depending on my stop loss. If I have a one dollar stop loss, um when usually I would trade thirty, forty cents, I would probably drop down to five hundred shares. And that is okay. So I will have a few different uh, steps like my regular step, which would probably be 70% of the quantity I'm trading, would be, let's say, 400 shares. And then I would have another step, which may be 200 shares for a very volatile stock, or maybe even 100 shares to extremely volatile stock. And sometimes when a stock is not a big mover, like, you know, we always talk about some stocks that are not big movers. And again, I can show you plenty of examples, like I, I just, you know, MU. MU is usually... Uh, not a big mover. So you see a breakdown in MU is usually not more than 20 cents. Actually, it's a quite a mover today, I have to say, uh, but not such a big mover. CMCSA is not a big mover. You see this stock when it, uh, see that's, that's a breakdown in CMCSA, right? 14, 40, 30, moved down by, that's a 10 cent breakdown, okay? Uh, that's a 5 cent move here, 10 cent here. So that's that's a stock that is, its personality is, if I would trade CMCSA and my average quantity is 1,000 shares, then I would probably trade this one with 2,000, okay? And that would be okay, because I will not expect it to move more than 10 to 15 cents. So some stocks, you would trade with less quantity, some with more. But it's not like, okay, so it's a $50 stock and that's a $5 stock. So a $50 stock I would trade with 1,000 shares and a $5 stock I would trade with 10,000 shares. No way in hell. So it's, it's, it's going to be 1,000 shares and maybe if the $5 stock is not very volatile, well, I will double my size. I will not trade 10 times the size. So it's not exactly the same quantity all the time, but you, you always have different, uh, mm, the same the same steps. Like I, it will be very easy for me to know that if I'm trading 1,000 shares, that stock moved up 30 cents, it would be, okay, I'm up $300 or I'm down $20. Uh, $200 if it moves down by 20 cents. If I'm going to trade uh, 500 shares, which is another step, and then I'm up like uh, 30 cents, that's well, it's <laughs> $150. So I, 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 would, I would know it by heart and that would be very easy for me to trade. I will not have to you know, use my, my, my personal calculator just like I did when I started because 137 shares. Okay, so I'm long 137 shares. I'm up um, uh, 17 cents now. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to approach this. I, I, I wouldn't even try. So you see that that's the reason and, and new traders believe me believe it or not new traders do that they would decide okay I'm trading five thousand dollars another stock cost thirty seven dollars so I need to trade one hundred and thirty seven shares okay that's my number seriously they do that I did it which is stupid but I did it okay see I have some more questions here good. Uh, should I trade less and take bigger position, double size on those trades? On those trades, I have 19. On, oh well, yeah, that's another. That, that, that's that's another good point, Brendan. Um, I y well, mm, yes and no, yes and no. Um, I usually add to my trade sometimes, or when you have. Um, when you have a stock that you really believe in, that you really believe in, I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't double. But if my average size is like 1,000 shares, I may go up to 1,200 or 1,400, something like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really double. But sometimes you may double mm, at some points, adding to a trade, pullbacks or something like that. But I, I, I wouldn't really double or something. I mean, sometimes I'm adding a little bit more. Yes, I do that. It's a little bit advanced. I, I, I wouldn't suggest that to a new trader. Really not. If 
if I could explain the importance of volume in getting into a trade and getting out of a trade and how to identify it while building up. Well, I, I, well, um, yeah, volume is very, very important. Let's go back to, I don't know, AA. Now, first, you see, look at this consolidation here. Look at this consolidation here. Um, and then look at the breakout. Now you see that the breakout happened, although that was lunchtime, you see that the breakout happened with uh, quite an increased uh, number of shares. So that was an increase in volume. When you see the volume increases at, the break, at a breakout, that means that it gives you a confirmation that the stock is probably going to continue higher. So that's a nice confirmation for the stock to break out over here. I mean, that always happens after the breakout, of course, but if you can hold on, as you see that the volume is growing, that is a good confirmation. Maybe you want to add as it moves to a new high, things like that. So again, breakout volume as it grows, it's, it's, it's important. Consolidation volume though, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. Now, for example, stock moved up, then consolidated for a long while. What do you want to see through the consolidation? I have a question for, that's a question for you guys. What do you want to see through the consolidation? Do you want to see the volume high or low? Do you want to see, I'm asking if this is good or bad. Um, as you can see, volume was higher at the beginning, then it dropped down. That would be the average, and then the average grew up here. So through the consolidation, the volume in fact was lower. Is that good or bad? What do you think? through the consolidation, good or bad? That's my question. That's good, bad, good, good, good. Okay. So I see the vast majority thinks that um, it's a good thing. Okay. Well, uh, the, 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 the answer is uh, correct. Um, good is, low volume is good. Low volume through consolidation uh, time is good. That is uh, the right uh, answer. Uh, you want to see low volume. You don't want to see, in fact, you don't want to see what we call new hands. The old hands, the one that profited from the stock moving higher, as you can see, uh, it moved higher uh, at the beginning of the trading day. And... Uh, uh, if you take a look at the daily, it's probably going to show you that it's a very strong stock. I don't really know. Okay, yeah. Look at the previous few days. Stock is moving higher. Wow, what a breakout formation here. How did I miss this one? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so nice consolidation. Stock moved over, over $50. It was a very, very nice breakout formation. So if you go to the intraday, you do not want to see high volume here through the consolidation area. The reason we don't want to see, uh, I know I had it in my swing trades. <laughs> I know, I know I had it. That was supposed to be kind of test and, uh, and a joke. I was hoping somebody will tell. Um, I know I had it. Uh, so you do not want to see, you do not want to see a high volume here. The reason through this consolidation you don't want to see high volume is we don't, you don't want to see new hands. You do not want to see new hands. Uh, meaning if, if there's a high volume here, that means that a lot of stocks are changing hands. Changing hands means that uh, a lot of people are moving out and a lot of people are coming in. You don't want to see new traders coming in. If there are new traders, they would be... Um, they, they, they wouldn't be able to hold as much as old traders. For example, the ones who bought it when it started moving up, you don't want to see them moving out. They are the ones who are in the money and deeply into the money, meaning they are making a lot of income. They are enjoying this trade and they are, and they are in fact, uh, and they are in fact uh, not, and could not be easily moved out of this trade. But if, if there was a lot of volume, a very high volume here, that would mean that a lot of stocks are changing hands. And changing hands means more new hands are, com new hands are coming into. And when you see a breakout, uh, new hands at the pullback may easily start selling. Old hands would probably hold. 
new hands will start selling so that would be it for volume that was the question I was asked let's see I see there were more questions there And I know I didn't ans answer everything, see, so I mean, there's a lot of things to discuss other than that regarding volume, but it's just one answer. You entered it uh, today, David, at uh, 53.90. At around 11. You mean 52.90? I think you mean 52.90, okay. Um, and got stopped out 30 minutes later right below the view up of 53.59 you mean here, you got stopped out okay well um, okay first I would encourage you to take a look at different time frames too. For example, take a look at 15 minute time frame. Okay, that's a 15 minute time frame. And I would like to ask you a question when you look at it right now with 15 minute time frame. Did AA do anything wrong? Yes, it moved to a new high. You bought it here. I understand that. Then it pulled back a little bit and then continued to move higher. Did AA do anything wrong? I mean, th does it uptrend? Yes. Does it look bad, like a very big pullback? No. I would say the same even if I watch five minute candles here. Does it look bad? No. The only answer I can give you is why you moved out is because you probably had a little bit too much size. Ask yourself the following question. If you had 1000 shares here, and it moved down by 50 cents, 40, 40 something cents, then you're down, let's say, almost $500 here. Would you move out? Possibly. Okay. If you had 100 shares and it moved down by almost 50 cents, would you move out? I bet the answer is no. Meaning, I'm watching it and I would say, yes, with 1,000 shares, you're probably out. With 100 shares, no, you're probably in. So I'm looking at the chart of AA, that pullback from the highs was relatively very, very small. I, I would start worrying if AA would move down probably to this level. That would be a level that I would kind of start worrying. But the weight moved down here, that was not a threat. That was in fact holding to the highs. Now stocks do have some what we call noise. So that, that, that noise really is not something that's supposed to drive you out of a trade. And there's few options to why you moved out. One of them is that you probably had too much size. You may have had too much size. And the second option is that you just didn't look right at the chart because the chart of AA is looking great. It's uptrending and you can only tell when you're not into a trade. If you're into a trade, then it's a little bit hard to say because you're a little bit worried here. There's no halts, David. Uh, when there is a halt, it's in the market too. And every broker would have a halt at the same time that the market has a halt. Halts are very tricky. You never know when they're coming. And I bet I know which stock you're talking about. Something with F or something. I can't remember. The, the, the one that we warned you not to touch. The one that opened up and closed down, halted, was halted several times at the same day. You never touch this one. You don't touch this with a two meter stick. And 
any more questions let me read the rest is it good idea to go bigger size shares when you see a good setup I I, I talked about this earlier Julian uh, the answer is yes but it's a little bit advanced I would definitely recommend not to do it at the beginning but um, if your average quantity let's say is 400 shares you really like something go along 500 maybe How do you decide the entry point in a trade? Yesterday support, resistance, daily view up. Well, uh, entry point in a trade, for example, if you take a look at uh, AA, that would be very, very clear. You see this high over here, and you see nice consolidation over there. So you always watch the daily, and when you watch dailies, the best, best picks come when you watch the dailies so it's always very very important to make a decision based on the daily um, intraday trading I use the intraday um, the intraday um, um, entry points uh, sorry the, the intraday behavior of a stock more like uh, for for more for um, uh, uh, for support and resistance but um, I would definitely use um, intraday resistance and not daily resistance. But uh, if you swing trading like uh, AA was posted on my weekly swing this week. So as you can see, it moved up very, very nicely. You could definitely look back and see the highs over here and, you know, just stop that. And then do the calculation calling that. Isn't that a classic struggle? Low size means uh, low risk, but also low return as well. You know, well, you have to start with low size. I mean, that that that's something you get just have to do when you start trading. You can't start with with large size because you will make mistakes, and there's just no other way to do that. And then you slowly work your way up. I mean, yeah, it's always a struggle, but there's but you're not meant to make money um you, you you at the beginning when you start i know it sounds a little bit hard but you 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 do you're not supposed to make money when you start trading you're supposed to lose as little as possible let's call it this way because everybody loses when they start trading uh level two volume well that would be another another uh lesson to buy us I wouldn't get into it right now because it's a little, yeah, Elfin, <laughs> all right, <laughs> exactly, Elfin. Um, guys, you never trade a stock like this Elfin thing. You never, ever, I'm, I'm, and I'm certainly talking about the day, I think that was here when it moved up to $140 and then came down to 60 or something, uh, or even lower. Guys, that was a stock that was traded in between $40 and $140 at the same day, okay? You 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 go to sweep with dogs, you wake up with fleas and you got quite a few fleas at the same day when it was halted so many times, so many times. You just don't touch this kind of stocks. How many times do I have to say that? So yes, it got halted several times. Yes, you could have easily blew up an account with that. Easily. What do you mean, uh, Ashley? I'm not sure I understand your question. Is opening range with 15 minutes or with 30 minutes? I mean, I'm, no, I'm not sure I'm following you. Do you use a stop limit, limit market orders? I use market orders because I'm trading, uh, I'm trading uh, CVDs, Brandon, and I have unlimited liquidity. And therefore, for me, it's very, very easy. But when, if you use stocks, you should definitely use limit orders. 
If I use market orders, uh, do I anticipate the move down and buy a few cents early and take the risk of getting a bad feel? Um, I always use, I mean, I'm, most of the time I use market orders, but no, I, I, I use market orders but because I want to get in and I want to get now. I'm not an investor. I, I can't have the luxury of waiting for the stock to come down to my price or whatever. I'm just clicking on the button and I want in. And I want to move out. I'm clicking on the button and I want to move out. And market orders do that the best way. Now, if you're trading stocks, not CFDs like I do, then you could definitely, um, you can definitely uh, use, sh you should definitely use limit orders. You could use market orders if you have high volume. Okay, John, today you went long 1,000 shares of what? Uh, at a breakout of $32. Huge mover today, of course. Was that here? I guess. 32, sorry. 32. I can't see a $32 break. Where was that? Got filled at 32.03. Took my 80% at uh, the break of 32.50. Okay. Uh, filled at 32.61 and then pulled back to 32 so you double down markets closed so you double down on the remaining 200 shares at the breakout 32.25 sold for the break of another did not want to risk another pullback on a double remaining shares Is it okay to double up only on the remaining shares after taking your partial? Uh, well, um, you traded 1,000 shares, you had a nice trade, and then you were left with 200, and then you doubled on the 200, meaning moved up to 400. I think that's the right thing to do. I would do the exact same thing. If I were you, I would definitely do the exact same. If 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 I would, so it doesn't matter if you if what trade really. I mean, I'm glad it worked out. I mean. Uh, sometimes it may, sometimes it may not. But uh, the way you managed it was absolutely uh, fine in my in my understanding. I mean, that's the exact way you should do that. Uh, you shouldn't double on the whole 1,000 shares. You had a great trade with 1,000 shares, and then you were left with 200. You saw a chance to add at the pullback, and you added another 200. The things, the thing you did, if I if I need to describe that, the thing you did by adding another 200 shares was in fact, um, you didn't take a risk that would risk your profit, and that's the more the most important part of what you did. You took a trade, you made a nice 800 share profit, and then you added another 200 shares. Now, if the whole 400 would go down the drains and lose money on the last 400 shares for some reason, if it came down a little bit, then you would still be a winner. I mean, you put some money in your pocket and you didn't give it, and you were not ready to give it back to the market. And that is absolutely a way that I would support. Okay, guys, uh, looks like uh, I've answered, uh, I believe I answered. Did, if, am I, if I missed any questions, sorry, you can just uh, copy paste that or something. Otherwise, we're done here. Um, yeah, okay. Great. Okay, so that was... Um, 
our session for today, our mentoring session for today. Thank you for being here with me. Mm, one more question here as a new student, uh, level trader. Uh, should I be basing my max size on traded loss limit for the 4K typically? Would accept max loss 1 to 3 percent. So I would avoid that, that, that. Glenn, I would I would need much longer time to explain that. Sorry, we'll have to discuss that maybe tomorrow in the trading room if you like to ask that. Really, I mean, just will take a little bit too long for that. Okay, guys, I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much for being here with me today and um, have fun. And if I'm not going to see you, um, have a great and happy new year and uh, all the best. Um, and hope to see you tomorrow in the trading room. Bye traders. Thank you.